inguinal hernias are different. I'm going to draw a picture of what happens in an inguinal hernia. An inguinal hernia is a hernia that occurs in the groin. So if you imagine a little baby, and I'm going to use a boy as an example. If you imagine a baby boy developing inside his mother, the testes start out in development, I'll turn this so you can see, start out in development just below the kidneys on each side. The testes, as the baby is growing, still inside his mom, what happens is the testes move down in the belly, they come around to the front, and they come down into the scrotum. So the testes come down, around to the front, and down into the scrotum. One of the things that pediatricians do the first time they meet a new baby in the nursery is they feel to see if the testes have come down, to see if the testes have descended properly. Sometimes the testis stops somewhere along the way. That's called an undescended testis. That's a problem that I can talk to you about some other time, but it's one of the first things that is examined for in a baby boy. Well, if you think about it, to get from inside in the back to what's essentially outside of the belly in the front, the testis has to go through different layers of muscle and tissue. What happens is, as it goes through, it actually pulls that tissue along behind it, and it makes a little hole, and it pulls a little pocket of tissue down behind it. So there's a little opening that's connected to the inside of the belly. That opening and that pocket is called the processus. Now, if, if there's normal development, what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to have the testis descend, a processus forms on each side, and then before the baby is born, the processus is supposed to close up. So a normal baby has a testis in his scrotum and no connection to the inside of his belly. Unfortunately, in premature babies, and even relatively frequently in full-term babies, that doesn't happen properly. What happens is, the opening to the inside, the processus, doesn't close. Now, if the processus doesn't close completely, but closes partly, and I'll draw it separately over here, but there's a small opening to the inside, and then a pocket of tissue that comes down below, what happens is that liquid from inside your belly, and there's always a small amount of liquid inside your belly, can come through the opening, and it can collect in the processus. And it blows up almost like a water balloon. When that happens, it's called a hydrocele. So a baby boy who's born with a hydrocele, sometimes called water on a testis, actually has a little opening in the processus which allows liquid from the belly to come down. Do all hydrocele's lead to hernias? The answer is no. Sometimes the hydrocele opening is so small that it closes by itself even after the baby is born. So if we see a baby who's born, who has a hydrocele, what we do is we wait until they're about one year old. At age one, if the hydrocele is still there, we would operate to fix it. If it's gone away by itself, if the fluid has been absorbed and it's not swelling up, if it's not swelling up from time to time, and swelling up from time to time, we just leave it alone. Now the other possibility is that the opening isn't so small, that it stays quite large. So you have an open processus, a pocket of tissue and an opening to the inside of the belly. And in that situation, what happens is your internal organs, mostly intestine in boys, 
In little girls, when they have a hernia, it's almost always the ovary can slip into the hernia sac. So if you imagine the intestine is a tube within the belly, and if a loop of the intestine slips into an opening in the processus, into the hernia sac, what happens is that loop of intestine causes the hernia to swell up. Now hernias are different from hydrocele's because you actually have a loop of intestine inside the hernia sac and there's a danger that the loop of intestine will get stuck. If it gets stuck, that's called an incarcerated hernia. If you have a loop of intestine stuck inside a hernia sac, it's called an incarcerated hernia. Now the